The glasses are on the head. This means business. <laughs> Waterloo Road again today. I had my rather epic scene today where I get all cut and it's lovely and fake bloody and it's nice. So that was fun. So back to answering your questions. Um, still got quite a few to come. There'll probably be a part five. I'm sorry if I'm boring you. Okay, on to the next question. How important has the support of your friends and family been? They've just been immense. I mean, I had to leave school to do Spring Awakening and my parents were very supportive of that, uh, and so were my teachers, and so were my friends. I had to leave my friends that I've had my whole life behind. And um, I'm not from London, I'm from um, up north, uh, South Manchester. You know, I went to high school with these people, and some of them I even went to primary school with. I had a very, like, really nice, tight-knit group of friends. And although, obviously, I still see them all the time, it, it was difficult to leave them when you're used to seeing them every day. Words can't describe really. I don't know where I've been without my friends and I I really don't know where I'd be without my family. They've just been amazing. And you know, they were there and we found out we were closing and I rang my mum and I said, Oh my god, we're closing It was the worst news I could have possibly gotten of any of us that could have gotten. She was just really supportive and she just, you know, keep your head up, enjoy this two and a half weeks, it's, it's gonna be fantastic and it was. And yeah, so they've been absolutely amazing. Hey, so I have neglected you guys again. I'm so sorry. I've been in like five different locations over the past like three weeks and it's been crazy. Started Holby this week, which was really, really brilliant. And I've just done my last day on Waterloo Road and they let me keep my friendship bracelet. None of you will know what that means yet and I'm not going to tell you, but you're going to have to watch it to understand what significance this has. It has a big significance in, in Waterloo Road. But anyway, so I have, I've had a haircut. I know that's not very interesting, but throughout Spring Awakening I wanted just to cut my hair off because it was just growing, 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 and it was horrible. Had a haircut, very happy about that. Not got any more split ends. Um, that's all the news I've got to give you. So now I'm going to stop talking about me and get on to your questions. How do you cure a sore throat before going on stage? I had it on Spring Awakening a couple of times, actually, where I had a really sore throat, but I knew I had to go on. And what I did was, is I got, literally, honey in the bottom of a mug with a slice of lemon and then add hot water up to the top, stir it round and drink it. And basically what that does is that the lemon acts as a, an, an antiseptic and the honey soothes it and the warm water, um, one, makes it drinkable and two, just gets your saliva going and it just soothes it. And although it doesn't do like what some mouth sprays does, you know, the throat sprays, is that it doesn't just, it doesn't numb it, but it takes the pain away without you realising that, that you're then hurting your throat by forcing it so that always works really well and that's what I use most really you know there's the things like vocal zones and stuff like that but they're all it's, they're all caffeine related and that's the, one of the worst things that you can do to a sore throat and especially if you're singing is just feed it with caffeine like soothers and throat sweets like that are terrible for your voice and although for non-singers they're fine and they do the job for singers they will make you force your voice and and you'll damage it what was your audition songs okay well I did um, Torn by Natalie and Brulier and Dear Mr President by Pink in the little thing that we got in the audition the email said they want kind of folk rock punk that kind of thing no musical theatre whatsoever because you know Spring Awakening wasn't really a musical theatre show and although you know the songs aren't made for musical performance particularly in terms of kind of musical theatre performance wise uh, I just had to really listen to the lyrics and um, understand them how influential was Leah Michelle in the making of your Vendler? She didn't have any influence at all. I mean, I saw her as Vendler and she was phenomenal. I mean, for those of you who never got to see her, it's such a shame because she was she's a fantastic performer. Oh, she was just brilliant. Her voice was just pure and it was beautiful. But from the, right from the beginning of rehearsal, Michael Mayer, the director, said, I don't want this to be a carbon copy of the American company because you're, you're not American, you're British. And... So he allowed us to create our own characters, which I thought was brilliant. You know, I got to create Vendler right from scratch, and I did loads and loads and loads of research into the time, 
in which the characters were living in and the traditions that went through their families. And yeah, so I really got to go back to the beginning and back to basics and create this character by myself, which is why my character is very different from Leah Michelle's, you know, in various aspects of it, just because that was Leah's Vendler and this is my Vendler and, you know, I've, I've always been thankful to Michael for letting me do that because I felt that then I could make her mine. And with working with the other actors in the show as well, it, it's, you know, let us to create a whole new show. So, so although Leah Michelle had no influence in my character, she had an influence in my loving of the show and what was the beginning of my love for the character of Vendler. Why was the British production not done in American accents? The whole point of Spring Awakening is that people are meant to find it accessible and be able to relate to the characters and relate to the story. And I think if it was in an American accent over here, people would feel that divide because it wouldn't feel at all their own. And, and plus, Spring Awakening is a European play, and I think some of the script, Stephen Sater has said this, the script just flows better because that's the way it's written. The play was written by a German man. So the way that we speak is very, very different from the Americans, and we use different language structures and sentence structures. And so it just works better in an English accent over here. In, in, in America, maybe not, because the, the lines have changed over here for them to make more sense over here, because we don't say stuff, for example, the... Bitch of Living Line was changed from look so nasty in those khakis to, well, it was many, what what wasn't it? Moody in that hoodie, um, crowded in those trousers, which is what it was, because over in America, they used to go to school in like khaki trousers. Over here we'd say khaki. That sounds like khakis, as in khakis, and it, it was just confusing, so we had to change that again. But that wasn't done until quite near the end, but that was always a decision that was made right from the beginning of audition, that it was going to be done in an English accent, so... So yeah, it's always been that way. But um, I think it works. So, two more questions left. I'm not going to do it today, because I'm going to make you wait. I'm going to be really mean. Um, you can post some more questions below. Um, and you never know, I may answer them as well, or instead of, who knows. Um, but yeah, so keep on asking me questions. There will be a part five, but it's just going to be really short. So ask me some amazing questions, and I will include them in the video. Two questions have to be chosen for the next video.